Okay. Um, so thanks everyone. Um, uh, we're, today we're going to be uh, doing an introduction to Wikidata. Um, uh, um, my name is Alex Lum. I'm the president of uh, Wikimedia Australia. Um, I just wanted to begin by acknowledging the uh, Wurundjeri people, um, traditional custodians of the land that, that I'm on today. Um, and if you want to um, uh, introduce yourself in the chat and, and say what land you're on, um, um, you, you can. Um, so as I said, we're going to be running um, this session today to, to introduce you all to Wikidata, which is one of the very exciting um, projects of the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I'll present for about 45 minutes uh, and there'll be a few exercises if you want to um, take part in those. Uh, this is one of four modules that have been created um, by um, for Wikimedia Australia um, by Mike Dixon, who's in the meeting. Um, the others are an introduction to the Wikimedia project, and um, there's also um, two sessions on working with Wikipedia. Uh, and this one is that uh, that Mike has run over the last few days, and and will be um, sort of rolling out to for others to to run. Um, I'll be doing this one on on Wikidata today. Um, there'll be a list of resources and presentation um, and publications at the end for, for some more information, uh, and we'll we'll touch base with you in about a week to see how you uh, go if you if you have any more questions. And there'll be hopefully there'll be enough time for um, for some more questions at the end. Okay, so let's get started. So um, here's the outline of what we'll be discussing. Um, the activities will be um, will be there, so we'll see how we go for time. And uh, the resources, the main resources are is a handout or a um, uh, sort of, uh, little summary sheet of uh, Wikidata in brief by um, a, a American Wikim um, Wikimedian called Andrew Lee. Um, that's available on Commons, so you can download it anytime, um, but we'll send you the link for that and put it in the chat. So first question, what is Wikidata? So it's an open, free, multilingual database um, to support the Wikimedia projects launched in 2012, so um, it's the 10th anniversary in 2022. Um, here's an example of the page. If you go to wikidata.org, you'll see a um, um, uh, you'll see yeah a page like this, which will have um, you know these boxes containing statements and properties and and various text. So it looks quite different to a wiki, Wikipedia article um, because it's more data driven. So how did Wikidata come about? Um, so going back to the early days when it was just um, Wikipedia and a couple of other um, projects, uh, you wanted to put put an image, let's say this image of Uluru, um, onto uh, the English Wikipedia. You would upload it to the English Wikipedia. Then we want to put it in the French Wikipedia as well. We would also upload that same image to the French Wikipedia. So there's a couple of um, problems with this. One, it involved a lot of effort to to upload that same photo um, to multiple projects, multiple editions of Wikipedia, but it also, um, you know, used up more storage space uh, and so on. So um, at some stage, they, the um, Wikimedia Foundation came up with the idea of Wikimedia Commons to act as a central image library. So someone can upload an image, they can apply um, um, captions um, in their language and so on, but that single upload of that image can be called upon by any of the language we can, um, of Wikipedia. English, French, any other language. But then that realized there was a similar problem with data. So info boxes are very common on um, on Wikipedia, um, and they they have sort of a basic summary of information about um, whatever the article is about. Um, but they are updated manually in every language, and depends on how many editors and and what resources they've got and what information they've got. Um, so there could be different um, levels of detail of, in, in, in each of these languages. Um, and they had to be manually updated, like uploading uh, an image to each um, language edition. Um, so that uh, brought about the invention of Wikidata, which is a central data repository. So in the same way that uh, Commons can store one copy of an image and that can be used by all the dozens of language editions of Wikipedia, um, Wikidata was created as a repository for central data repository for all um, language editions to draw on. Um, some of them choose not to do that. Some of them still like to update um, their boxes manually. Um, they like the control that gives them, but um, but the data is there in Wikidata in case um, um, Wikimedia projects or other um, systems as we'll go into later 
um, want to draw on the, that, that repository. So Wikidata is part of all the, um, the web of linked open data. Um, as you can see here, this is a, an example of uh, an entity, the National Portrait Gallery in the United States, and all the, um, um, the items that um, link to that, um, to that, uh, you know, that item. So, you know, you can see there's various properties. It's the location is in the old patent office building. Its headquarters is in Washington, DC. It's an instance of an art museum. Um, this, this data is all public domain. It's all um, freely searchable. It can be queried. It can be downloaded as uh, dumps of data, like uh, uh, files of XML files of, of data. So people can download it and uh, manipulate it and um, in their own, um, however they want to. Um, and it's also each item has a unique permanent identifier and is linked to other identifiers and other um, entities of data. This is a really good diagram to show how Wikidata is different from a normal relational database. A lot of um, databases and data sources you'll be familiar with in, in a spreadsheet format, um, you know, rows and columns of information and fields and records. Um, this is this is an interesting way diagram because it shows how um, the data in Wikidata is linked, um, is, you know, items linked to other items and properties and so on through through the use of triples, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, so an important part of Wikidata is the QID, which is a, the the persistent. This is the persistent permanent identifier um, that is used um, to add, add to a sort of identify every um, item in Wikidata. You can see it starts with Q. Um, it's a weird story about why the letter Q is used because uh, it doesn't seem to respond to any, you know, it doesn't mean item or record or anything. It's, a, um, it's actually was apparently the first name of the girlfriend of the developer or something, <laughs> something strange like that. So anyway, so each of these are um, oh, actually, um, uh, I think that Mount Kosciuszko one might be, uh, no, the Australia one is wrong, I think. I think the Mount Kosciuszko one is right because they, they should be different because they're, they're, they're um, should be unique identifiers. <laughs> um, anyway, so yes, they, they're unique. So each item will have a different number. Uh, this is important because actually a lot of, in a lot of databases, you'll find um, different records and it will be the same, the same item will be duplicated. And that can happen in Wikidata too, but it shouldn't be. The, those items should be, you know, one item, one entity should um, be represented by a single item in this system. So um, you can see Q5, that would be one of the really early ones. It's only one digit. Um, we're up to, I think, nearly nine digits now. So, you know, 110 million uh, you know, around that area. Um, but yeah, yeah, so each item in Wikidata has a QID, which is the letter Q, followed by a series of numbers. I mentioned triples before. Um, this is how the, these items are linked um, via properties. Properties, so I mentioned the, the items uh, start with the letter Q, properties start with the letter P. Uh, there's also another third letter, which is S for sources um, or references. But here's some examples of some triples. So Perth, that, that's the Perth in Western Australia, is the capital has the property capital of and the state of Western Australia. Um, Perth, that same item. Um, Inception, that's when it was created or um, founded, um, and has the property five seven, piece five seven one. Uh, in the year uh, 1829. So that's a value, that's an actual numerical value, not a, uh, a link to another item. Uh, and Perth uh, was named after Perth, um, which seems obvious. Um, I'm presuming that's the Perth in Scotland. So, um, uh, but yeah, you can see um, that's that's another thing that uh, that this shows that, that items can have the same name, but the different numbers because they are different entities. Um, but it's quite different from Wikipedia because in Wikipedia you'll see something can't have the same name as another article. So um, you'll have a disambiguator like um, uh, Perth, Australia, and Perth, Scotland. I think I think the Perth, Australia, uh, the Perth, uh, or Perth, Western Australia, or something like that. So um, that's one of the differences here. Um, in Wikipedia, in Wikidata, they can have the same label or the same name but uh, they'll have different numbers and the description needs to be different as well. So here's um, the descriptions I just mentioned. So as I said, Perth, three, eight, 
Q83183 is um, has the description in English of capital city of Western Australia, Australia. Um, there's all, in grey there, there are some aliases. So these are um, alternative labels. These are really useful for searching because of course things can have different names or you know old names that, uh, that change, um, different variant spellings. Um, so yeah, um, that, that really aids in the search um, in being able to search Wikidata and finding the item you're looking for. So here we've got um, Perth, capital city of Western Australia, um, and it's got the aliases in case someone types in looking for these searches, Perth, Commonwealth, Western Australia, Perth, Australia, Perth, WA, and Perth, Oz. The Perth that I mentioned before that it was named after is um, a city in Scotland. Uh, and so that has the, the description city in Perth and Kinross, Scotland, UK. Um, and it has the aliases Perth, comma, Scotland and Fair City, which must be their nickname for it. So they're the English um, labels, descriptions and aliases. But the thing about Wikidata is that it is very multilingual um, and um, can supports all the languages uh, in, I can't remember the number, but it was a, one of the ISO standards, um, uh, which has, has a list of um, many, many languages. Um, and that can be, yeah, that can be used. Uh, any of those languages can be used for, for these um, labels and descriptions. So here's some other examples of uh, other languages um, for the same item, the same entity of Perth, the city in Western Australia, um, and its label, the name in various languages and the description in those languages as well. But once again, that, that all stays to the same item, that, that one item, the city of Perth is represented by this Q3183, um, but it has labels in multiple languages. This, this can have some amazing applications for, for um, generating maps in, you know, maps of uh, geographical locations, but with the labels in, in whatever language you want to produce the map in. Um, and uh, for searching, um, if you don't speak, you know, English necessarily, yeah, you could, you know, you can search um, and all those other languages will be found um, to get to this item that you want to get to. So this is um, some of the the um, screenshots from the um, from the um, web interface of Wikidata, um, and this is what I mentioned before. That uh, so there's um, there's the these are the things that link those triples uh, that link this item to other items and give more information about it. So this is a, this is one about a person, um, and this lists their given names: uh, Clive, Vivian, Leopold. You can see also that there's some um, this series ordinal um, qualifier. So this is a third type of uh, of descriptor here. Um, but a qualifier is something that that uh, gives a little bit more information about a property and how that property applies to the item or the entity. So there's a series ordinal. This is the order of this person's names: Clive, Vivian, Leopold. In that order. Um, there's also a start time, 1947. So I'm guessing that means that. Um, this person, oh, this person is Clive James. I'm sorry, I didn't see the, it was covered up by the, the attendees. But uh, yeah, this person is Clive James, the Australian um, uh, media commentator and uh, television presenter. Um, and yeah, so I think his name was Vivian, but he started calling himself Clive um, at, from 1947 onwards. So um, so it just goes to show, you know, that's uh, you can use qualifiers to, to give a bit more information, a bit more detail, a bit more nuance to, to um, these properties, rather than just saying this is this is the fact and you know it has always been the fact. Some, sometimes that will be the case, but sometimes you, you might need to, to qualify them using these. Um, so Clive James again, he's got an academic degree, Bachelor of Arts with Honours, conferred by the University of Sydney in 1961, and he majored in English. Um, there's a reference there too, um, which we'll cover later. And here's a lot of the identifiers. There's a lot more, but um, these are some of the, the key ones um, uh, in various sources, a lot of national libraries, such as National Library of Australia Trove, um, National Library of Israel, um, and New York Review of Books. As an author, um, Clive James would have a lot of, um, a lot of identifiers in, in uh, libraries and, and uh, literary um, sources. Um, so here's the, the identifier for the Los Angeles Review of Books. Um, that's, the, that's his record page on there. Um, and the link to the, the National Portrait Gallery in London. And as you can see, if you click on those, 
uh, identifiers, the external identifiers in Wikidata, it will take you to those pages, um, directly to the page about Clive James, the portraits in the National Portrait Gallery, and his uh, profile in the uh, Los Angeles Review of Books. I mentioned there, there were some references. There's a little reference um, section at the bottom uh, in each um, property. Um, as he said, as I said, um, we I noticed, noticed his given name. He was born with the name Vivian, but started calling himself Clive from 1947. And here's a reference for that um, for that fact that he that he started in presumably an interview or a profile with him. Um, it's just the URL, so it, but it looks like it's in the Sydney Morning Herald newspaper. Um, and that's yeah, so that's the that's the reference for that fact. So just like uh, in Wikipedia, referencing is very important to um, to yeah to show that that a fact is true or verifiable, allowing others to check and and see that that is the the case, and it's uh, should be included. That um, yeah, it's the same with Wikidata. That um, that if there's a fact, especially a contentious one or, or a weird one, as to why why that qualifier is in there, that you wouldn't include the um, uh, a reference. And there's a reference for his date of birth too, um, which is um, in the snack, which is a um, uh, sort of um, um, catalogue. Okay, so let's um, have a quick activity. Um, go into wikidata.org, uh, www.wikidata.org. Um, if you have an account, um, you can log in, or if you're already logged into Wikipedia, if you've got an account on Wikipedia, it should use the same one. Um, search for an Australian city a or a kind of vegetable or a glam institution um, and find the um, QID. So as I mentioned, um, you should see it at the top. It should be in the web address and it should also be on the top of the page. Um, so what is the QID? How many statements are there? Um, so you might have to, might be, take uh, quite a bit of time to count them, but because um, some of them will have quite a lot for, for items in this, this field. Um, have a look at how many of them are referenced. Um, now, just uh, saying there, um, how many of them are referenced. Um, clearly, Wikidata and Wikipedia are linked, and you'll see a lot of time that it looks like there's a reference, and when you look at it, it says it's imported from um, Wikimedia Project, English Wikipedia, or French Wikipedia, and so on. So, we're generally not counting those, we're looking for external references here, but um, but yeah, um, Wikipedia can be used as a reference for Wikidata items, um, usually because the Wikipedia article will actually have um, more deeper links to references. Um, but um, but it's probably better to put, um, if you're adding references or creating items or editing items in Wikidata to, to um, use an external one if you can. And um, if you wanna, yeah, if you've uh, found one, you can copy and paste the, the name and the QID into the chat. Um, and the number of statements and references. Um, there's not too many of those. <laughs> but as you can see, the, the, the leak, the vegetable, the leak, um, yeah, that's a, there's its Q number. It's got 25 statements, but only three references. Um, so, you know, maybe that's, you know, some of those things are self-evident, but yeah, maybe that's probably an item where you can, you can um, improve and find some more references. Although maybe it's um, sort of broad enough that it's, uh, I think a lot of people just assume, you know assume you know what a leak is and <laughs> what it's for. Okay, so um, in the when we're looking at those properties, um, there's a key item that should be in every um, every item on Wikidata. It's not always on the, in there, um, and this is something that you could you could certainly add on. Um, it can be a bit hard to do. It involves a lot of uh, some. Sometimes it can involve. Sometimes it's obvious, but sometimes it can involve sort of sort of quite complicated ontology of what something is um, and it's not uh, not immediately self-evident um, you can put more than one so uh, if it's it's hard to decide what uh, an item is then uh, you can put sort of multiple ones if, if they all all apply so we've got some examples we've got the big merino here um, big merino um, is an instance of a big thing so that's a that particular Australian phenomenon of doing creating large sculptures or buildings uh, representing some something. So this is a big big sheet, um, but it's also an instance of a sculpture. Um, so big thing, as I said, that's a um, a subclass of something. So um, you can have there are two two main types of of um, what something can be an instance of 
something or a subclass of something. So something that exists in the in a physical sense that is one thing like this, uh, the big merino, that's an instance of something. Um, but a big thing, there can be multiple things which are instances of big things, and they are subclasses of something. So that means that you're giving a broader category of um, what a big thing is. Um, and in this case, it's a subclass of a roadside attraction. The other instance of sculpture is a subclass of a visual artwork. Um, and there's probably other any other items you could include as, as what these um, are subclasses of. Um, but having at least one is important. Um, what that means is that A, you've got a description of what every item in Wikidata is, whether it's an actual physical entity or concept. Uh, and, and often that concept can be a, um, a subclass of something which gives you a very detailed ontology. You can build on almost a tree of, um, of you know, different types of artwork, you know, visual artworks, and then, and then you know, that branches out into paintings, sculptures, um, uh, collages, et cetera. Uh, and you can build these amazing trees of, of linked data um, like that um, using these, um, using this. But you can also filter, you know, you can query Wikidata and you can filter and, and, and build um, lists of, of things by, um, by what they're, they're examples of. Um, sorry, just uh, back to that, can something be an instance of and a subclass of something? Uh, it can be, and you see a few cases of those. It generally shouldn't be, and it's pretty rare. But in some cases, the concept is so um, difficult to, to, to split them that there are some, I guess, some concepts that can be a subclass of something, but also an instance of something as well. But, but generally, you'll only have one of these or the other, and something that something is an instance of will be a subclass of something else. So creating a new Wikidata item, there's an item create new uh, on the menu at the side, and that allows you to create it. Um, you can choose a language here, but this is just a language for the label and the description. As I said, you're not creating an English item like you would creating an English Wikipedia article. You're actually creating a, an item uh, that represents that object or entity in any language. Um, but, but here you're choosing to create the item. There's a lot of uh, little robots, little programs and bots that uh, will go in and translate things that you put in. So you might put in um, a label and a description in English and there's a, a little bottle come in and translate it into Dutch and, uh, and so on. So um, you, you, can, you can just put it in the languages that you're comfortable with and that you know that this thing is called and the descriptions, if whatever languages you're comfortable with and, and a lot of other users and bots will come in and, and fix it up. But you choose the language that you that you know. In this case, we're doing English. We're creating a, a roadside attraction called the big, I mean, a, a big thing called the big chook. Um, we give it the description roadside attraction in Mumbai, Australia. And, uh, um, and you put some aliases in if you think it's known by different names and then click the create button and that's it. It creates a new queue number, um, which will be distinct from our other ones. It will apply these uh, label description and aliases to the English uh, versions of those. And as I said, some bots will come in later and uh, uh, add other translations. So the next activity, um, go to the list of big things in Australia. I'll post the link in the chat just a sec. Okay. Okay. I think that's the uh, that's the link to a query, which will bring up this. This runs a query in the language Sparkle, which I'll go through later, and it will um, produce a list of, of big things. Um, so, if you want, um, you can paste the. If you choose one, um, uh, you can uh, paste it in the chat. Um, have a look at what properties it might be missing, and some of the key ones are on the right there. Location, uh, location. Um, would generally be a suburb or a town that that, uh, that uh, thing is located in, um, made from, like it might be made from plaster or paper mache or concrete, um, depicts, but it depicts, so, you know, it could be a frog or a sheep or um, a, um, yeah, any, any number of things. 
um, what is the sculpture of and inception when it was created um, if you know the the artist or the builder you can do that oh, i've uh, got the big watermelon <laughs> okay um and yeah if you see any of those properties missing and you know what the what the uh the solution is or the the um, you know that what that gap might be um you can click on add statement which is at the bottom of the the boxes which contain the statements um type start typing the name of the property so you can type location made from depicts and so on and then type in a value so um if you're linking it to something else like a location you want to link you'll link to another wikidata item which is the suburb or the um uh oh, okay so amanda's noticed that there are um she's chosen mary creek in northcote and but it has two listings hmm. um that's that's something that is quite common I'll, I'll take you through that i was talking before about how a wikidata item can can have um, should be you know one thing representing that one entity um there have been some uh i guess bulk imports into wiki data from sort of from sources like geo names and so on and a lot of geographic entities like such as rivers and um localities might have duplicates because um because there are two ver two versions of the same thing in in geo names and then someone's trans uh, i imported them into one of the wikipedias and then that wikipedia has meant they've been um transported into wikidata as well so they're all gradually being merged by um other users who are who are identifying and checking that they're the same thing um but there's yeah that's one of the um i'll, I'll cover that later but um but yeah about about merging items um uh, yeah so as uh, amanda says they both seem to be imported from a wikimedia project and it's probably one of the wikipedias that has done this um, big import anyway so if you're comfortable with that um don't have to do it if you're not uh, if you're worried about it um uh, but um, yeah, that, uh, yeah, type in the value, um, whether it's a, another Wikidata item, uh, as, as you said, um, I meant to Mary Creek, or um, and you can find the one that you that uh, you want to put in there, or if it's something like a year, so it could be a value, a number, or a, or a or a name in a particular language, um, you can put those in as well, um, and it will generally suggest a value. Sometimes with a year, it will it will check the date format. Sometimes, if you're putting a, a number in, like a, like an elevation, um, elevation above sea level, um, it might you will have to put in a unit as well. So you might say um, 460, and, and it will ask you to put in a unit, and you choose meters or feet or whatever the the uh, the unit of the, the value you're putting in. So when you're comfortable with that, um, click publish, and that will save it. So it's like a um, Wikipedia article edit. If you um, make your uh, yeah, if you're logged in, it will put down your username as making that edit. If you're not logged in, it will put the IP address that you that you made that edit from. Okay, and the next activity is finding a, a reference. Um, so um, you can Google your big thing to find a website or a news story that talks about it. Um, if you find one of those statements that doesn't have a reference, you can click, uh, we'll say zero references. Um, you can click on the little plus button to add a reference and then start typing the property reference URL and it will fill in the property number of that and then paste the URL of your news story or your reference in. Um, it's also a good idea. If you can put in as much information as you can, there's a lot of fields you can put in, in references. Um, generally, the URL is, is fine. It's a good idea to put the, the retrieved date in. It, that tells you what the, um, that tells whoever's looking it up later or verifying it that um, that was the date it was, you know, the information at that time was, was accurate at that time. So. Um, you know, it's a good idea to put that. And you can put other things like, you know, stated in Sydney Morning Herald or, or, or so, on, so on. Anyway, so um, if you're happy with those, now you can click publish and you've saved a reference and you've referenced a Wikidata item, um, not just using Wikipedia. And as I said, there's there's a lot of work to do in, in filling a lot of these references. Um, I guess Wikidata was a bit behind Wikipedia in terms of the the drive to referencing um but, but that's sort of i think that's um you know it's really catching up um and that people are sort of filling in a lot of those references particularly for contentious statements okay um what i mentioned before about um info boxes getting information from wikidata there's some of them have will have a a um will have a rule in their in their programming that when you 
that they'll only show in the info box um, statements that have references or external references. So, um, so that's uh, that's one of the reasons why referencing is a really good idea and, and a good, uh, good thing to work on because it just means that information um, can be verified and can, can will appear in more uh, info boxes. Those that use Wikidata. Okay, now I'm going to take you through some of these tools. Um, it's a I, what I what I my hope with Wikidata is that you you, you sort of see some of the, the potential um, and how it can can um, you know um, be used for for some of your own ideas or projects. Um, mix and match is a um, and, and a lot of people ask how can they they help how can they contribute to Wikidata. Um, there's a lot of these amazing tools that allow you to to make a an amazing, a huge contribution. Um, Mix and match is one of these tools, um, and a lot of the tools are written by the same guy, Magnus Mansk, who who um, has you know written all these incredible um, tools that make um, improving Wikidata and working in it and you know querying it um, so much easier. So mix and match is a tool that lets you compare an, an external database, another database. It could be a library's catalog, it could be a um, or you know a publisher's catalog in this case. Princeton University Press um, authors. So these are authors who have, have they had, had uh, works published by um, Princeton University. Um, and yeah, so they'll have an identifier in that catalog or in that database. And what Mix and Match does is it says, I've got a Wikipedia, oh, sorry, a Wikidata item about, or a Wikipedia article about this same, the person with the same name or a city with the same name or whatever the, the data, data is about. Uh, in this case, it's authors. Uh, and it's matched these these authors that um, that are in the PUP database to wiki to authors that are on Wikidata, uh, and you and what this does is it adds a human touch. It's not just a, a robot. I mean, there's a robot. There's a program going in and, and doing the matching, the initial matching or suggesting matching, um, but it's relying on the human touch, a human, you know, just the ability of the human mind to look at, to you know to look at that and go, yes, that's the same person, or this person died. Uh, 20 years before that person was born, so they're obviously not the same person, and so on. So, so it just gives this—it's sort of combining the the best of automation with with the best of the, the the ability of the human brain to to sort of make these to check these matches. So, so here's these are ones that the, this tool has suggested um, could be matched to the PUP data data, uh, and the, um, if they are the same person, um, Avadit Acharya, you can click on confirm. If it's clearly not the same person, you can click on remove, and that will that will unmatch it, and then it will throw it back into a, a a pool for people to 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 do more sort of manual checking and matching. Um, Open Refine is another um, amazing tool. It's a it's a free download. It used to be developed by Google, but they've made it um, open source, um, so completely free uh, free to use. Very powerful tool for. And this is an important thing about if you if you ever getting into doing um, you you do want to sort of do bulk imports or you have a data set or or you've curated some data or information um, that you that you want to do um, both open refine and um, mix and match are really good for what's called um, um, what was called what's the word I'm looking for um, uh, yeah you you, you want to make sure that you're not when you're importing information that you're not importing duplicates, like I mentioned before about you know all those imports into Wikidata creating duplicate or duplicate Merry Creeks, for example, um, reconciliation that was the word I was looking for. So um, yeah, you want to make sure that you want to reconcile what's in your database to what's already in Wikidata. So mix and match helps you do that. It like links. Um, what's in this data in a particular data set to what's already in there, and 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 um, codifies that link by adding the identifier in the the new data set to to Wikidata, um, and this also does the same. It, it does a similar thing to mix and match. It will look at the name. It can look at the names, um, and and just check if something's already in Wikidata, so you're not creating a an item which is essentially about the same thing. Um, and it's very powerful. It's got very powerful tools for using regular expressions to filter and search and and um, manipulate text. Um, to link to other things. Uh, this is this is the reconciliation engine in OpenRefine. Um, and as you can see, it's it's matched um, in various languages, all these um all these uh, um, items to in in this 
um, editions database to to um, editions in in Wikidata. Um, and you can also use, I mean, yeah, you can basically set up a spreadsheet in um, Google Google Sheets or Excel, and you know, import it into this. And it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it sort of adds, adds superpowers to your spreadsheets. Um, Okay, so querying Wikidata. So we're putting all this data in, um, or, or you know, getting it from Wikipedia, or um, putting it in manually, or importing it um, through um, a, a tool, which I won't go into. But there's ways to 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 do sort of bulk imports, but it's a very complicated process. But it's like, why would we want to? Uh, yeah, we, but the key is we want to query Wikidata now. Um, you can query Wikidata using a language called Sparkle, which I I think is a delightful name, but uh, if you know SQL, which is the the usual language used for querying um, for, for querying databases um, or, or SQL, um, Sparkle is kind of similar, but you kind of have to uh, think in a different way. Like Spark, uh, SQL and Spark, uh, SQL works for uh, very well for you know uh, relational databases, but um, Sparkle is quite different. You have to think about it in terms of um, of terms of that sort of linked data, the triples. Um, and you can have chains of triples and so on. So it's very powerful, but it can be a bit complicated. A lot of the words are the same, um, you know, so a lot of the terms such as select and so on are, are quite similar. Um, I think the best way, so you can see there the, the Wikidata query service, um, it's query.wikidata.org. Um, there's a little button there, examples, that is really helpful. That's how I learned all, all my Sparkle, um, which is to, Click on that, and there's some examples of, of amazing queries that people have done doing all sorts of things from um, uh, generating maps and so on. So you can copy those and and you know tweak, change the queue numbers in the queries to, to to sort of build your own queries from that. Um, but um, as I said, that's that's a there's a big learning curve to that. Um, but there's also a query builder, which is a visual um, form, um, and uh, yeah, this has been improved um, recently. Um, Quite amazingly, so it's um yeah can can allow you to to do very powerful queries. It will generate the Sparkle for you, so you don't need to learn this this whole language and you can just fill in these forms. And there's also another tool um, called uh, PetScan, which is um, very powerful. It allows you to a query Wikidata, but also all almost all Wikimedia projects such as Wikipedia as well. And you can do things like uh, you can do this in either uh, Wikidata query or um, in PET scan, but you can you can sort of do things like show me all uh, women engineers without a Wikipedia article, and you know we sort of in Wikimedia Australia we will use sort of queries like that to to sort of uh, you know do lists of potential article creations for editathons and things like that. So um, yeah, it's 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 so flexible, um, very powerful, quite complicated, um, but you know like yeah if uh, if, I'm just hoping that's it adds that spark, and you can you can see some some potential for it. Um, there's a lot of people willing to help you, uh, whether it's in you know uh, Wikimedia Australia or around the world, or the Wikidata communities. There's Facebook pages, uh, mailing lists, um, the talk pages. Um, there's a there's a whole um, community uh, page on Wikidata to to allow you to um, yeah, where you can ask questions. You know, I want to do a query that does this, and and these you know Sparkle experts will help you out. And here's some of those the the amazing projects that use uh, Wikidata. Um, Golden Age of Illustration, adding fairy tale books from their collection to Wikidata. Um, one of the great things about Wikidata is it's it's gone so much further beyond Wikipedia. Um, the notability bar for notability is is um, a bit lower. So you know there's you can put sort of things like every edition of of a you know written work or um, and uh, things like that, uh, sort of where where you know you wouldn't necessarily do that, or every song on an album, you could put that in Wikidata, but you wouldn't necessarily, you know, that wouldn't necessarily reach the notability bar in Wikipedia. Uh, and there's all these amazing tools for visualization and and presentation of of the data. Not just uh, you can, of course, run a query which produces like the one with the big things that'll produce like a spreadsheet or a you know a normal sort of query result table. Um, but uh, there's also tools which can produce timelines, um, bubble charts, maps, um, all sorts of uh, uh, amazing visualizations other than just uh, presenting a table of data. Um, the sum of all paintings, which is a uh, 
um, working with you know various art galleries and museums uh, to document all the the papers they hold. I mean, all the paintings they and artworks they hold in their collections, um, and that can be you know they can produce these amazing catalogues. Um, and you know, uh, you know what paintings depict something. That's that's one of those really powerful properties that you know that you won't find in a lot of um, a lot of other sort of data sets. But you know, you can show me show me pictures of um, you know the um, uh, Virgin Mary or um, you know paintings depicting um, uh, a pug. You know, <laughs> so, 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 so on. Um, and the useful tools. So uh, I mentioned that some of the tools before mix and match and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, um, author disambiguator. One one thing you'll see that if you're um, what I like to do is go into Wikidata and click random random item, and it just chooses a, a random item. And and I do things like like I was talking about before. Let's see if there's references. See if there's an instance of or subclass statement and so on. You know, see if there's statements missing, and I try and fill those in. Um, what you'll see when if you do that, like look at random. Um, items, um, you'll see that there's a huge number of uh, items about scientific articles, um, journal articles, um, and that's sort of part of a. You know, there was a there was a big project to do that called WikiSite and and so on, which uh, which built up this enormous um, corpus of of, uh, of academic journals and 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 articles. Um, author disambiguator. You'll see a lot of them have just have the name of the the author in in as a string, so like so just a Block of text, um, you know, say author Alex Lum. Um, what, what author disambiguator does is it scans through all these and tries to match them to the actual item about that person, and that just it means that you can use the bottom tool there, Scolia, which to produce a profile and a, and a tree of all co of co-authors, um, and also so it's a very powerful tool for a sort of um, academic institutions and and glam organisations um, to see you know where they're their staff um, and their, uh, uh, you know, and what sort of papers they're writing and what areas they're writing about, so on. Um, and duplicate references um, that that enables there. There's a lot of tools, like I said, if you're into editing references, you can you can copy references from other from other statements. Um, you know, uh, often you know, say an article in the Australian Dictionary of Biography, you might want to copy um, that item from um, you know the same reference. To, for the date of birth, the place of birth, you know, um, the spouse, and so on. So um, it just speeds up uh, a lot of these tools. You can just install them in your profile and then um, add the uh, yeah um, use them these these tools to make your editing and um, a lot easier and fill out a lot of this information. And the last thing there is that is the link to Andrew. Um, I'll post the link. Um, is uh, sorry, um, Andrew Lee's. Wikidata handout, Wikidata in brief. So that will cover a lot of the concepts of, uh, of taking you through today. Uh, you can see a lot of those terms that I've mentioned, um, but it's yeah, it's a really, really useful sort of one. Uh, you know, I think it's a just a one or two page handout. You can, you know, if you yeah, um, to hand that out to the um, have a look at that yourself, or hand it out to those interested in data. Um, uh, if you're, you know, that you friends or colleagues, um, yeah, yeah, feel free. It's a really useful. I've got a lot of links to 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 some more information about um, anything they're interested in. Okay, um, thank you very much for attending. I hope that's uh, been useful for you. I hope, like I said, I hope it's sparked some uh, you know uh, idea of uh, of something that could be useful or something you could you could help with. I think um, the key of what I like to say is that Wikidata needs needs curators, people who are interested in a particular area. Like Margaret's very interested in. In biota and particular um, plants, and, uh, and has done, you know, tons of brilliant work on the uh, on sort of um, filling in, you know, taxon authors and uh, um, and identifiers in in databases. Uh, but yeah, if there's anything in your area of uh, of interest or expertise that you you feel like, um, yeah, um, uh, yes, let, let us know. Um, oh. Uh, yeah. uh, thanks to Mike for um, doing the slides and the, the notes. Um, it's been really helpful. Um, um, and um, thank you all for attending. <laughs>